face on one of these TVs. I don't know if they're all going to show it tonight. I think we're just about there. Well, good evening, everyone. I see my face over here, not on the big one. The regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Yarmouth Zoning Board of Appeals this September 14, 2023. We have one, two, three, four matters on. We're going to start with the first one on our agenda. That is concerning Petition 4994, a remand from pending litigation involving the Evangelical Baptist Church of South Yarmouth, Inc., 10 Carter Road, 63 and 69 Pond Street, 1240 Route 28, South Yarmouth. That's just a lot of addresses there. What's the primary address? Uh, uh, 1240 Route 28, I believe. Uh, anyway, that property is uh, located in, a in uh, two zoning districts, that of an R40 and a B2. Tonight, our applicant seeks a special permit pursuant to 104.3.5 and or pursuant to 202.5 to combine, redivide, and change use of lots from single family and religious institutions to single family and B2 zoning district uses. Good evening. Would you identify yourself, please, for those people ho at home who do not know you? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian Wall. I'm an attorney. I have an office in Sandwich, and tonight I'm representing the applicant, the Evangelical Baptist Church of South Yarmouth, which I'll here and after refer to simply as the church for, to save uh, a lot of words. Um, this is a remand hearing, so I know that the notice that was just read said that the applicant is seeking a special permit. But the applicant actually obtained a special permit from this board back in January of this year. At that time, the board unanimously voted to grant a special permit under Section 104.3.5 to authorize and permit the church to combine and redivide six parcels of land into three parcels of land. Um, I'll get into the details, God bless, bless you, you uh, in a second, but just by way of introduction. So what happened thereafter was an abutter named Mark Fallon, who I understand is in the audience today, and he's represented by David Reed, who's in the audience today, filed an appeal. <clears throat> After the appeal was filed, Attorney Reed and I started to discuss what the abutter's concerns were and whether they could be addressed while still satisfying what my client was hoping to do. And we were able to reach a settlement um, which calls for the addition of three additional conditions to the special permit. And so with the cooperation of the town attorney, we asked that this matter be remanded. And tonight I'm asking the board to consider these three new conditions be added to the special permit. So since it was a year ago, I just want to refresh the board's memory as to what happened. The church operates at 1240 uh, Route 28 in South Yarmouth, and it owns six separate parcels of land as well as a 20-foot right-of-way with, which has a total of 67,930 square feet. There are six separate structures on the parcels, the church, a school, a residence, a garage, two sheds, and some paved parking areas. And the properties are in a B2 and an R40 district. In November, the church applied for the special permit that I mentioned to combine and redivide these six parcels into three parcels with one structure on each lot. And the reason for this is that the church, like many churches today, has a bit of a declining population and some financial needs, and so it wants to sell the residents. And actually, the buyer uh, is with me today uh, in the back, uh, Mr. Connor Curran. So um, the permit was granted unanimously, four to zero. And as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Fallon appeared at the hearing, and he opposed um, the project or the, the permit, essentially because he was concerned that the part of the property that's in the business district might become used for business uses that are inconsistent with his residential use. And so I talked with Mr. Reed about this, and we've reached an agreement that calls for the addition of three additional conditions. And the language that we're proposing is set forth in the letter that I submitted to the board as part of this hearing. But I'll summarize, essentially, the primary part of the agreement is that there's an agreement between the parties that the land that's being, the parcel that's being created in the B2 district would only be able to be used for single family residential purposes 
or existing education, educational and religious uses which are already ongoing on the property and which are exempt under 40A Section 3 anyway. And this is something that satisfies Mr. Fallon's concerns and my client is satisfied with it as well. We also want to make sure and confirm that the lots that are being created are considered legal pre-existing non-conforming lots. And we believe that's the case under the bylaw in any event. It's just kind of stating the obvious. And finally, um, we simply wanted to confirm as well that the structures that remain on the lots, the, th the three new lots that have been created by the special permit, can be altered or extended under your bylaw by special permit. And again, that's kind of, I think that the law allows that and it's just stating the obvious. And obviously the board has an interest in this and so we're respectfully requesting that you help these two people that were having a dispute um, who have now resolved it. And if the board would see fit to adopt these conditions and issue an, a modified special permit, it will resolve the litigation and allow um, the permit to be implemented. So the order of the court of 71423 remanding back here, whatever decision this board makes tonight will be offered to the court, as assuming these three conditions are added, will be offered to the court and the, that will then bring that to judgment? I think actually, Mr. DeYoung, it, what would happen would be a modified decision would be filed with the town clerk. And if the conditions are adopted as requested, um, the plaintiff will dismiss the litigation okay. by stipulation. Okay, that's great. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I know there are other people in the audience that are going to speak towards this, to this issue, but let's see if anybody on our board has any questions for you this evening, all right? Certainly. Mr. Martin? Uh, no, I don't have any questions. I understand what's being done, and it <coughs> seems like a logical uh, uh, way to solve the problem. Mr. Frapery. Uh Same. I don't have any questions. Oh, I love this. This is going to be a fast meeting. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Igo. No questions. Mr. Mantani. No, I don't have any questions either. I see the three conditions, and uh, I think it's great you were able to work it all out. Thank you. Ms. Murphy. No questions. I echo every comment you've <laughs> just heard. These are the long and lengthy comments by my co-board members. <laughs> Does anybody in our audience care to speak in favor of this petition? If so, please come right up. And as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Reed, you can sit right up at this table. For those at home, Attorney David Reed has just joined us in the proceedings. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as uh, Mr. Wall uh, accurately and, and concisely outlined to you, um, we are in full agreement with what's proposed. Uh, I think that this actually re reflects what you intended when you granted the special permit in the first place. It simply incorporates it into the decision rather than leaving it as an assumption or as a, an intention by the applicant. Uh, we, we, we think it will memorialize th this intention that I think was the uh, owner's plan in the first place, uh, but, but makes it so that perhaps when the next person comes along and buys the property or the next one after that, we have this as an assurance that in fact everybody's intentions will be carried out in the future. So we would uh, agree with the request. We would ask you to incorporate the three conditions precisely as outlined in the letter and incorporate them <coughs> into a, a modified special permit so that the applicant can go forward with their plans. And just for clarity, you represent Mr. Fallon. Yes, I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And you are the petitioner. Uh, you represent the petitioner in the action before the Barnstable Superior Court or the Land Court? Correct. It's, it's Barnstable Superior Court. That litigation will be resolved by, the, yes. by this, should the board act favorably on your Present. request. Okay. Ms. Murphy, any questions of Mr. Reed? No. Antoni? No. Mr. Igo? No. Mr. Frapery? I just, not, do we really need number three as far as conditions go? You I feel right, very sure, go ask right ahead. Is that really necessary given that it doesn't hurt? So if I can tell you the reason why, um, the bylaw is rather unique. I, I do this kind of work in other towns as well, and I haven't seen a provision like it. There's a body of law that says that if you make a non-conforming lot and you alter it, 
sometimes it, beca it can be called what's called non-complying. It, it loses its grandfathered status. So this, under your bylaw, when the lots are combined and recreated, they're considered non-conforming lots. And in fact, these lots are all less non-conforming than the six parcels. Mm -hmm. So we just want to make it crystal clear that the structures that remain can be altered or it's extended under your bylaw like any other grandfathered structure. It might be stating the obvious, but I think it's important um, for the parties going forward to understand that. I don't have a problem with it. I just didn't know if it was necessary, that's all. So. Uh, it, to, be, to be candid, it, it might be a little stating the obvious or redundant, but I wanted to make sure that my client was protected in this from a further appeal or from somebody taking issue with something they have the right to do in the future. Thank you. Excuse me. Mr. Mr. Fripper, Mark? if I can add, oh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, you go right ahead, Mr. Reed. I was just going to add that, that having had a hand in drafting of this bylaw, uh, that is exactly what was intended in the first place. So, Mr. Martin? No issues. I have no questions. Does anybody else in our audience care to speak in favor of this mm -hmm. petition? If so, please come to the microphone, tell us who you are. Seeing none, does anybody care to speak in opposition to this petition? If so, come to the microphone, tell us who you are. And seeing none, we now close it to the public's input on the petition. We open it up to board discussion, deliberation, or motion. So, if, if just for clarification, this would be a motion to amend the petition? <coughs> 4994 to incorporate conditions one through three um, as requested in the letter of August 22, letter 20, of August 22, 2023. Correct. Pages two and three. All right, I'd like to make a motion to that effect. Uh, I'll second it. Who did? Dick. Yeah. Boyd, care to have any discussion before moving it along to a vote? Hearing none, all those in favor, please. Oh, we got to <coughs> still do roll call, don't we? Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Frapery? Aye. Mr. Igo? Aye. Mr. Nantani? Aye. Ms. Murphy? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. So that carries unanimously. <laughs> I'll look forward to a draft in which both of you present, uh, uh, agree to the draft before sending it in, okay? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Good to see you both. You too. Glad that all worked out. Thank you. This is the way every petition should work out. <laughs> there should never be any controversy. Now, I think we're changing the guard, are we now? You're going to get the... So we're going to just wait a, a moment or two, but the, whoever's next can come right up. And that would be a uh, petition... Uh, Four zero uh, five zero four eight Jessica Ruse, for property right located at one forty four West Yarmouth Road, West Yarmouth, Mass. That property being in an R twenty five zoning district, and this evening our applicant seeks a special permit uh, pursuant to I apologize, a special permit pursuant to a two hundred two point five of our zoning bylaws. And concerning use table designation P7A to allow a family daycare for up to six children. Patrice DeMello. Is there nobody here on this petition? Okay. That's easy. Let's just see. Did they just. No, they're not here? I thought they were just here. No? The group was just. Okay. Oh, they were with the church. Let's ask. The church group. Let's ask if see if they're out here in the hall. Because otherwise they go off the list. We go all the Lawrence. See if the Lawrence is there too. <laughs> yeah, we could use a clerk. Oh, there's the Lawrence. There. What you got? You about here? Yes, she is. Yeah, the lady. They go to the end of the list if they do show up. Hi, Dolores. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> okay, so two's off the oh, board. Hello, but... young lady. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. See, you've joined us. We missed you in the last year. 
All right, so we're going to go right to the next one, which is Mark Grant, DBA Qual uh, Quality Construction Company, property located at 58 County Road, West Yarmouth, Mass. That property being in an R40 district, the applicant seeks a special permit pursuant to 104.3.2, subparagraph 4. Hi. Good evening. Subparagraph 4, to install a new foundation, build a 4-foot by 5-foot addition, extend the existing <clears throat> bump out. The applicant requests a waiver from the requirement for a certified site plot plan less than two years old. And identify for everybody who you are, please. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is Mark Grant. I am the construction supervisor who will be doing the proposed work on the property if we get approved. Here with me this evening is Judy Snow, owner of the property of 58 County Road. So as you just read from the application, we are proposing to add an addition on the left side of the cottage. It was very challenging submitting documents with this application because there are no site plans for the individual cottages in this campground. There is one large site plan for the entire campground that is listed at the Registry of Deeds. So what we did to help you see the proposed addition in regards to the property lines is we basically took a picture or printed a portion of the overall site plan from the campground showing the cottage at 58 County Road with the proposed addition. In regards to the property lines left and right, basically these property lines are agreed boundaries between the cottage owners. A lot of these cottages have been in families for generations and are passed on, and they all know where their property lines are and they are agreed to where they are. So we drew in on the left and right side of the existing cottage where the property lines are. So basically you could see from the proposed addition how far it is to the property line on the left side. The right side property line is pretty much irrelevant. And we are seeking a special permit for this proposed addition. Okay. Make sure I've got the drawing you're referring to here. I think it's this one right here. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. You can flip right around. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. There aren't any site plans out there. We've encountered properties out there before. All right. So let's start to see if board members have questions. Uh, uh, Ms. Murphy, any questions about petitioner and representative? Yeah, I'm just looking at this for the first time. So. Mr. Mantani. Um, I don't have any questions r right at the moment, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. There you go. Uh, yes, um, this plan that you have that shows the dark area here with the walls, that's your proposed bump out there, I believe. Correct. So that's what you propose to do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Frapery? Um, just on the foundation, is there is there a basement today, or it's just on a slab, or what is it? Uh, there is no f current foundation. There was a portion of a full basement under the cottage now, so part of the building permit application is we are proposing to lift the cottage, for, put a full basement under it. That's what triggered them requiring us to get a special permit to get the proposed addition part of it approved. Was that, was that because of some water issues or just uh, gold? Talking to the building commissioner, he explained it to me is that it's because a co it's a cottage and not a residence. Yeah. Is that why, it, that is why we would need a special permit for this proposed addition. Um, I meant more of the foundation. Is that, what's the foundation's purpose? Is, is the, the new proposed foundation will be a concrete full basement underneath the cottage. Basically, you get it up off of the ground. It is starting to see some signs of rot and decay. Basically, a lot of them in there are sitting on the ground. Is that what this one is doing? It's sitting on the ground pretty much? Yes. Okay. That's all I had. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Martin? Um, <clears throat> I don't think I have any anything really. It's a very small addition for for <clears throat> the bathroom apparently, right? There's, there's no intention on finishing in the basement, is there? No. Intention on what? In fin finishing the basement in any way. No. Yeah. I don't have any questions. Well, I'm interested in how we all found uh, property lines. Uh, 
when uh, drew property lines when you don't have any kind of a plan for the cottages at all. How did you come to the, these configurations? Well, Mrs. Snow shares with me that these are agreed boundaries in between the cottages that they all have agreed on for years and have been there, if you will. Well, how are they demarked on the ground? Do they something out on the ground? No, not at all. No, no CBs or anything? No, it, it's basically that tree here. You keep, you tend that land from that tree, and I'll tend the <laughs> land from that bush. And God forbid any trees die, huh? <laughs> Might have to rethink the whole clan camp. <laughs> and I understand that you're the petitioner uh, based upon a uh, lease for the cottage for one year. Does that continue to get renewed or something? Yes. That's historically been the case within your family, yeah. Four generations. Four generations. I guess it's been a while, huh? <laughs> All right. There is a uh, piece of correspondence that comes from uh, Mr. Erickson of the uh, YCGA, and uh, I guess it's Mr. Erickson. Uh, good morning, Mark. It's unfortunate t the town is request uh, questioning Judy's lack of formal deed. As I mentioned in prior emails, there are no individual deeds issues to each cottage. Owner are registered at the con uh, county uh, court registry of deeds. Uh, there are those individuals at the town hall that do not understand the campground and its organizational oper operational process. L let me just say on that comment, I find that incredibly offensive to the, not to you two, <laughs> but by this individual. Uh, because we didn't create the campground with no boundaries shown on any plan. So for, for us to question it is what our jobs are. Each cottage owner owns their own cottage and leases the lot on which the cottage is located. An analogy would be a, an RV, which is owned by the individual who then uh, leases or rents the lot on which they park it. Yeah, but we don't give building permits to RVs. Uh, so going on with the letter, I believe Judy has uh, provided you a copy of our lease and, and her stock certificate. The only documents issued by the campground in one of our organizational documents it states <laughs> that in order to be issued a lease, the person requesting the lease needs to be a member of the Yarmouth Camp Ground Association. I had my cottage raised a few years ago and had no problems getting the necessary permits. So I'm confused, concerned about the issues you are experiencing. Well, here's the deal. I can't help his concerns, uh, but what I can say is everything that's done in this park will come before this board because none of it's conforming. And, and please don't, <laughs> I, my, forgive me for my tone. I just find it incredible when this sort of a thing comes into our board. But I can understand because there are no site plans. There's nothing to look at. You know, what are the distances from the property lines to the existing dwelling? No well, one knows. It's, it's, it's no fault of, the, of yours. Please know that. We're not suggesting any fault of yours. It's just the comment. I mean, this isn't new. This has been going on since the campground's been there. So to question it today in 2023 is a little bit bizarre, but in any event, you have an addition that looks to me to be pretty reasonable. Uh, a, a request, uh, rather, for an, an addition that looks to me to be pretty reasonable. What's going to get down in the basement, the mechanical and... Uh, Mechanicals, and just basically get the cottage up off the ground so it doesn't... Will that make this cottage year-round? So it's not going to be used for you. No, right now, it's most of it is just on field stones, and um, there's there's was a rot issue at the back door, and then um, a rot issue with the at at the bathroom. Uh -huh. And um, the person that had looked at the bathroom was like, "Well, you know, timbers come at this length and that length." It would make sense if when you're going to repair this bathroom that you use a 12-foot board because inst he just said it, it made sense, but then I couldn't repair it because I needed the special permission. So 
just it will just make where the rot is um, the ability to repair it and make it so much more functional for the family. Good. And Good. then to, you know, I'm getting to that age where I'm starting to think of the next generation and I'm just trying to solve their problems by getting it up, getting it dry, <coughs> hopefully, you know, some of these issues. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, our concerns on this park have been uh, that we not see it become go from 20 cottages to 20 year-round homes, you know. All right, does anybody in our audience care to speak in favor of this petition? If so, please come to the microphone. Let us hear what you have to say. And we see none. Does anybody care to speak in opposition to this petition? If so, please come to the microphone and let us hear what you have to say. And we see none. Therefore, we close it to the public's input on the petition. We open up the board discussion and deliberations. And tonight I'm going to uh, start with you, Mr. Igo. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's a very reasonable request. I think we've had a number of petitions from the Yarmouth campgrounds over the years. Um, I think the way that I generally look at this is, is instead of boundary lines, I look at how close is the addition to the, the roadways that you have in there. I see that you have ample distance between the, the roadway, or should I say driveway, that runs by your cottage. Um, it's a very small request. I certainly think they conform to the bylaw, and uh, I'm planning on supporting it, and I would recommend the board support it as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Mantoni. I would agree with Mr. Igo, and I don't really have anything else to add. And uh, Ms. Murphy, any um, thoughts? Um, nothing for me, Ed. Oh, I'm so sorry for this cough. I really and uh, how about you, Mr. Martin? Uh, I think it's a diminutive request and is uh, logical to grant relief. Mr. Frapery, we get a new word now. Huh? Favorite de yeah. de minimis. De minimis. We gave up on de minimis. Yeah. Oh, we're going to find a new <laughs> word. <laughs> um, no, I have nothing else to add. Thank you. You know, my only, uh, my only regret is that this isn't more visible from the road so that we could see the lighting like we see on the oak bluffs uh, on the vineyard and, uh, you know, on those certain festival nights. And, and uh, it's just such a pretty little neighborhood in there. The cottage is particular. I love your cottage. It's just, you. Uh, you know, I hope you keep all that trim and you... My dad, my dad cut that gingerbread, oh, you, so it do not you touch it forever. Yep. Don't you, unless to repair it, don't you touch it. <laughs> an admonition I bet your dad gave you, right? Don't you touch my trim. <laughs> um. Well, it's just gorgeous. It really is very attractive. Modest what you're seeking to do. And please understand my ire is not with you, but rather the person that wrote the note. Okay? So, anybody prepared to make a motion? I'd like to move uh, petition 5049 as, um, as requested for a special permit. Condition. With no additional conditions, no conditions. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. All right, we're now uh, uh, going to have a discussion on the motion. Hearing none. Can I just add? Oh, sure, please. One, uh, yeah. Could we just enter this plan and this drawing as exhibits? Are they already in the file? I don't know if they are or not. I just wanted to just say. Why don't we do exactly that? So what we're talking we're about, fire, that's yeah. fine, <coughs> is a uh, rendering, uh, one, two, three sheets of a rendering. This is off your CAD system. Basically. Nice job. We're going to make that exhibit one. We don't mean to sound like a court, but this is required by law that I go through this silly Understood. Okay. So this is exhibit one, and this is the rendering of the work uh, to be done, or what it will look like after the fact. Exhibit number two is a uh, <laughs> conceived plan of the location of this uh, uh, cottage. And uh, I don't know who drew it, but 
think it's just a blow up of the uh, actually the overall campground in that section. <coughs> yeah, yeah. 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 We, we actually have a large rendering ourselves on file somewhere. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm talking about this top no, one. Yeah. That sheet, sheet one of it is where, where this cottage is located. Oh, okay. The sheet two would be the overall Yarmouth Campground Association uh, cottage locations the, uh, of the whole uh, area. So those two exhibits are being added to our file. It, uh, we have a motion uh, made and seconded, hearing no need for a, a discussion, I would say, uh, that I believe uh, the relief uh, is uh, appropriate, uh, that the petitioners have demonstrated uh, that there will be no undue hazard, nuisance, nor congestion uh, if we grant this relief, and that it will uh, uh, keep be in keeping with the character and certainly with the neighborhood. You know, <laughs> the, the neighborhood's going to be happy. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I, I think you meet all the criteria, and with that, uh, uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll start with uh, Ms. Murphy on the motion to approve the petition as, as supported. Yes, as presented. Yeah, presented. Aye. Okay. And uh, uh, Mr. Mayantoni? Aye. And Mr. Igo? Aye. Mr. Frapri? Aye. <coughs> aye. And I am an aye. So that carries unanimously. <coughs> and what happens now is that at some point, Usually before the next meeting, I'll try and do it as quickly as possible. I just like Sunday football, and so that's kind of putting me off on these things now. So uh, a, a decision will be drafted. It gets filed with the town clerk's office. From the date that is filed, 20 days must uh, go by uh, in case uh, somebody wishes to appeal from our action this evening. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen, but who the heck knows? Uh, assuming there be no appeal, then the special permit will be granted, and you'll need to take that special permit and record it at the Barnstable Registry of Deeds, returning proof that you've recorded it back to our fantastic uh, board administrator. Okay. Great. By the way, I didn't mention a name. Ms. Dolores Fallon sitting to my right. The Good Dolores to see Fallon. you. Thank you, members of the board. We'll see you. Thank you very much. Have a great night. <coughs> That brings us to our last petition. You can come right up. <clears throat> Mr. Kenny, you coming up? Mr. Kenny and I graduated the same year in high school, so I'll speak up, Mr. Kenny. Mr. <laughs> Kenny, you can come up. <laughs> this, is for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is petition 5031 of JDB uh, 212 Midtech Drive, LLC. Uh, Jeffrey Belazikian <laughs> uh, is the manager. Okay. Uh, the property is located at 186 uh, through 212 Midtech Drive, West Yarmouth. Uh, that property being in the B3 zoning district and as well within the Aquifer Protection District. This evening, our applicant proposes to demolish the existing structure and parking lot and redevelop the property by constructing an 11,360 square, uh, square foot contractor bay building with 11 units and 33 parking spaces. Yes. Excuse me. <clears throat> the applicant seeks a special permit pursuant to 104.4.1 and 104.4.2 of the zoning bylaws to allow a condominium form of ownership for the contractor bay building. <clears throat> the applicant seeks a special permit pursuant to 202.5 and 406.5 of the zoning bylaw to allow for a contractor's yard containing non-hazardous materials in the APD or Aquifer Protection District. The applicant seeks a special permit pursuant to 104.3.2.3 of the zoning bylaw to raise and replace a non-conforming structure. The applicant also seeks a special permit and a variance pursuant to 301.4.1 to waive the requirement <coughs> that parking areas be located at the side and or rear of the principal structure. Also, pursuant to section 301.4.4, to waive the requirements that existing trees of at least four 
inch caliper within the park, uh, prescribed buffers be retained in the parking areas for five or more cars. Under 301.4.6 to waive the requirement that the lot contain at least one tree of three caliber inches or larger uh, per eight cars. Uh, and I'm sorry, and disperse throughout the parking area for parking lots for 20 or more cars. And uh, under 301.4.9, to waive the requirement that all lots in the B3 district, which shall contain a business use, retain existing trees of at least four inch caliber within prescribed buffers. Uh, this indicates Attorney Kenny's presenting on behalf of the petitioner. Why don't you just go ahead and tell us all about the petition. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. For the record, my name is John Kenny. I'm an attorney with the law office in Centerville. I come before you tonight uh, representing JDB 212 Mid-Tech Drive, LLC. Here with me this evening is uh, uh, Jeffrey Bilzekin, the uh, manager of uh, JDB 212 Mid-Tech Drive, LLC. Uh, John Laval, the, the project engineer. We're anticipating uh, Kurt Raber, our, the uh, building architect, uh, to be here also. So hopefully he will, he will be joining us. Uh, as I'm sure the board recalls, we were here uh, on July 27th. Um, that night you voted, I think there were four hearings, and uh, the three before us were all voted 5 nothing. And I think uh, ours would have been a 5 nothing vote, but it would have gone the wrong way. So we requested a continuance. We listened carefully. We took notes and we went back and we looked at this project. Um, the <coughs> thing that was became clear to us was don't touch the trees along Mid Tech Drive. Uh, Mr. Martin made that very clear. Mr. DeYoung, you made it very clear. As did the, the did the rest of the board. Uh, so we went back and tried to figure out all right, how can we redesign this to fit what we're trying to do, which is contractor bays and provide adequate. Uh, access uh, to these units and not disturb those trees. So shockingly to me and surprisingly, uh, it turns out that uh, Mass DEP uh, stormwater management policies requires metal roofs to be tre treated through a water quality BMP device. Oh. Uh, this required larger vegetated surface four bays, which were previously provided in the front buffer of the lot as that was the only place they would fit. We have switched from a metal roof to asphalt roof, and Mass DEP stormwater management policy considers uh, this to be clean runoff. We can directly connect the roof drains to the under underground Caltech chamber systems, which is what we have now done. This allowed a significant reduction to the size of the vegetated surface four bays and allowed us to design them so they can fit on either side of the building. We took them out of that front buffer. We don't have to remove any of the trees out there. A couple other things I just wanted to point out. Um, we are making improvements to the site. There was question whether or not we were kind of overbuilding on, on this site. Uh, on, on the setbacks, the front setback uh, required is 30 feet. Existing is 30.8 and proposed is 76.4. Uh, on the side yard setbacks, required is 10. Existing is 47.9 and we're proposing 44 feet. In the rear, uh, it's required to have a 30-foot setback. Existing is 29.7 and proposed is 30.5. So the rear setback was non-conforming. And there was a, some talk about cutting into the uh, back buffer. And we actually are not cutting into the back buffer. The limit of work line uh, that we show on our plan is the limit of the existing pavement, uh, which will be removed. Uh, then there's a 10-foot fence on the, on the back of the projects. Uh, I mean, a, a fence along the back for... Um, uh, uh, for <laughs> I'm having a senior moment for exclusive use areas behind each unit. And uh, that fence is, is 10 feet, and the building actually meets, uh, is now, would now be conforming at 30.5 feet. So we're taking away a nonconformity. Parking setbacks are uh, 20 feet are required. Existing is 19.6 and proposed is 20. It's another improvement, uh, removing a nonconformity. Uh, the maximum building uh, coverage is allowed is 35 percent. Existing was 8.9 percent. Uh, the existing building is two floors and contains 10,680 square feet. We're proposing a one-story building uh, 
but our, and our coverage would go up, but it's 18.9%, which is almost half of what is allowed in this district. Uh, maximum imp impervious coverage is 70% uh, allowed. Existing is 64.2%, and there was a reduction down to 59.1% uh, with this project. So there is, I'm not going to say there's significant improvements, but we're reducing uh, nonconformities and improving uh, the overall lot coverage in your water district. I think that's kind of a significant uh, uh, change. At this point, I'm going to ask John Laval to kind of walk you through the uh, site plan, uh, show all the changes, and hopefully um, Mr. Rabel will get here and can walk you through the building design changes. Okay. Um, no, 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 no. On the easel and with a microphone in your hand, please. Do you have a pointer with you? Uh, no, I don't, but I don't think we're okay. going to need it. Um, so the, the site wasn't changed dramatically. The building has not been moved. The driveways and the limits of pavement around are, are the same. We've removed two parking spaces um, and provide the required amount of in-lot trees, so we have some more islands on the site here and here. Um, and we've regraded the site uh, to put the low points um, on either end of the building. So the grading of the site is a high point here, and it drains this way to a sediment four bay here. And uh, from the high point, it drains down here to a sediment four bay right there. Um, and it meets all the requirements of the DEP stormwater management policy uh, with the roof surface changing from metal to asphalt shingles. Um, so again, we, we did lose two parking spaces, but we have two more that, than we need. We have the required amount of in-lot trees, um, and that's about uh, the gist of, of the changes there. So, so really, it's, it's a very similar site plan. The uh, two parking spots that were uh, removed, I believe, are uh, replaced by those uh, two trees in the middle of the uh, park parking lot. And we're, we're putting them to the front, and then there's a couple up around, uh, along the side of the building. We're required to have uh, 4.1 trees. <laughs> uh, we've provided six. Um, again, because of the, the use, we want contractors to be able to pull in and swing in and uh, swing in and out of uh, the bays. So we really can't put islands with this, with this proposed project. Uh, so they're to the front of the lot and up against the building. And then I'll address the uh, changes that we made to the uh, Declaration of Trust in uh, Master D with the hopes that Mr. Rabel will be arriving uh, shortly. Um, you would ask to, to make it clear uh, within the uh, Declaration of Trust uh, and Master Deed, who's responsible basically for what goes on on the, on the project. Um, so we a I added language, a copy of the recorded certificate of appointments along with the acceptance shall be filed with the Town of Yarmouth Building Department. Mr. Bill, Bill Zekin will be the uh, initial trustee. When new trustees are elected, uh, we have to uh, put a notice on record at the Bonsville County Registry of Deeds uh, a, a notice of the appointment of the new trustees and an acceptance by those trustees. Uh, and I've added in here a requirement that that document, once it's recorded with the Registry of Deeds, be filed with the Town, town of Yarmouth uh, Building Department. So the Building Department will have that on file. Well, that sounds like a normal way it would, it would proceed anyway. And then I, uh, I clarified the responsibilities of the uh, trustees in on page six on uh, section article five um, five point one powers of the trustees sec section D, uh, the trustees have the responsibility in the operation care or upkeep and maintenance of all the common areas and facilities, including but not limited to the water ut water utility and septic systems and those facilities necessary for public health and safety. At the board's suggestion, I contacted uh, both Attorney Tardiff and Attorney Reed, who was here earlier this evening, and that, that's the language that they gave me, uh, told me they used. I incorporated it in, into our documents, so we've got, a, um, I think, uh, hopefully a clarification that's acceptable to the board. And Mr. Reba just walked in, so perfect timing.
Well, let's give him a second to unload. Want a cup of coffee or anything? <laughs> I'm going to ask Mr. Raven to uh, kind of walk you through uh, the changes to the building, as well as, um, Kurt, if you can just kind of address the landscape plans as well. Great. So I'll start. Well, good evening. modified the building to include a uh, steeper pitch roof first, changed it to asphalt roof, uh, architectural style shingles instead of the standing seam metal. And we also uh, varied the uh, front facade, putting high windows in the overhead doors, trim around all the windows of the door openings, uh, awning over the man doors, different uh, decorative light there. And then uh, we also used a clapboard shingle on each end of the building and then a cement board and batten vertical plank siding. Again, <coughs> we did keep the um, foundation. That's a kind of an important structural element. We have a copy of that plan. Uh, it is the cover page to your set. Oh yeah, okay, thanks, yeah. Just looked at it then. Yeah. And then again, the, the building plans are unchanged from the previous filing. And on the third page, or page A2.1, shows all four elevations of the building. Again, the front elevation has been modified to be a wood frame, a hardy plank, and hardy um, vertical plank, and board and batten siding. Is a trim around all the door openings. And that's all three. Um, steel pitch, uh, five pitch. A little bit challenged with the steel building manufacturer because we're still using a pre engineered, pre manufactured steel frame. So it is still a five pitch. Um, but it's steeper than previously. I'm so sorry to do this to you, but you've already spoken so long. Can we pass him a mic? I should have yeah. thought of that earlier. How's that? Better? Yeah, um, we just need to record all this. Stuff. Okay. Um, this is the uh, landscape plan. It's revised quite dramatically from the previous submission. For, uh, before you'll remember that we were modifying the front buffer quite a bit for drainage. With the drainage moved to the back corners of the site, um, the front buffer was able to kind of remain virtually unchanged, except for the two curb cuts. The shaded areas here in green are excavations to remove an existing driveway and put a lawn back, and similarly excavations for sewer, or not sewer, uh, fire and electrical uh, utility connections that we expect to have to make. So the landscaping in the buffer is limited to the edges of the driveway. The round brown circles that you see on our plan are all existing trees. So we've done our best to keep all of those. And then we've added new trees in the parking areas. And because Yarmouth's kind of very strict interpretation of parking lot trees, um, I think Mark Grills has in the past not counted the ones at the ends of this parking area. We were able to fit in two on either end of the building, two in the middle. We, we took out a parking space to get those two in. So we're showing six trees. We know four are compliant. Your, your bylaw does require five. Um, so we're hoping that we have four and two halves make five. <laughs> um, and again, well, the building, just, just building leave footprint. Just the firewood out there, and then that will constitute one. There you go. Um, so very simply, the landscape plan is using all of the existing buffer um, as our landscape. And I did bring with me some um, some Kurt, photo. Just one moment. Can you just point to the back um, lot line where the edge of pavement is? And uh, I don't know if it's on that plan. Okay. The existing. Yeah, the, exist the, the, exist existing the existing edge of pavement is here on this dotted line. 
Um, so the, the existing development there today, the parking lot exceeds our building plus our little fenced-in storage yards. It's actually three or four feet beyond our development. And so we'll be patching and repairing where that came out a little bit ex extra green buffer there will be restored. Are you able to get a, a, a vehicle around the back? N no. 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 Okay. Right. That did not come up um, during site plan review uh, from the fire department. And then finally, I just wanted to show this illustration, a photograph from on the street. Um, and, a, um, and then we took that and superimposed it above the computer rendering of the building, and it virtually hides it. So what we did is we superimposed all these trees in the foreground in the buffer over our drawing. And you can see that there's a hint here of the um, beige colored hardy pl plank clapboard siding, and then through the trees you'll be able to catch glimpses of the red barn board, board and batten siding. That looks nice. There you go. That's, nice I'll answer questions when we get to it. With that hardy board, what a, what a wonderful building material, huh? I know, that's, that's top shelf, that stuff. So we tried to address uh, the major concerns that we, we heard from uh, the board, which was um, the non-disturbing of the trees and then the design of the building. And even though now that we're not taking down all those trees, you probably won't see these, this building unless you drive in. We still tried to dress it up as instructed, uh, break it up so it doesn't have, uh, as the th chairman called it, a barracks look. <laughs> and I, I think we've done that quite nicely. I think it's a very attractive building. I drove down the street today. Um, the real estate office on the right, as you pull in, is beautifully treed. Then you get down the street. Most of the lots are not well treed until you get down to our end. And, and now, by keeping this buffer, this is probably the second uh, best buffered uh, lot on the street uh, with the trees. And our building is set back, and as Kurt just pointed out, you can see it on the driveway going in and on the driveway coming out, and otherwise you, you really won't be able to see this building very much unless you're really peering you, you come before this board because we give you good thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was actually very um, interested to learn that an asphalt roof runoff is considered cleaner than a metal roof runoff. It just seemed contrary to common sense, but that's, what, that's really what kind of triggered our, our ability to redesign and save uh, all, all those trees out front. I addressed all the special permit conditions. I'm just going to walk through the uh, applications, but um, we're seeking a special permit. Um, well, I'll tell you what, we need to go through each one of these individually on a vote. So why don't we not do it the way you're currently considering okay. it? And instead, we'll, uh, I'll ask you to go through <coughs> a, a relief you want. Someone on the board hopefully will make a motion to approve with a second. We'll do a roll call vote and vote on them individually. Very good. Instead of you reading them now and then just doing the same effort in just a moment. So why don't we just at this point, if it's okay with you, unless you have new material you want to offer. No, I think we're ready to take any questions the board may have. You did identify Mr. Martin and I as being <laughs> vocal about our concerns, so we'll start with Mr. <laughs> Martin over here. I didn't mean to signal you out. I was just trying to say we we listened. <laughs> well, I heard you loud and clear. We were big mouths. Is that what you said? <laughs> it won't be the first time. Um, <clears throat> no, I, I'm I'm pleased to see the changes that have been made. I, I still don't consider it an attractive building, but we're making progress. Um, you know, the awnings are helpful. The roof pitch is definitely helpful. The materials are definitely helpful. Um, uh, leaving the uh, the front buffer in front, although I've always wondered why you couldn't use the existing driveway as opposed to plowing in new driveways, but I guess that's something to do with truck flow. Or uh, and, uh, truck flow and part of it is uh, emergency uh, vehicle access fire department coming in. Okay. You think it's easier with these two two curb cuts like that as opposed to what's there now than out? Yeah, uh, with, with the two curb cuts they can come in and swing around the front of the building, whereas if, if they came in and our building sitting there in front of them. Uh, keep in mind the existing building is off to the, to the far left. Right. 
So it's, it, it was kind of driven, I think, a, a combination of the, uh, the use and <coughs> the concern for uh, emergency vehicle access, and in particular the uh, fire truck. Anyways, leaving the existing trees, and, and they better stay there. I'm, we're having a lot of trouble lately with people saying they're going to leave the trees, and the next thing I know, they're gone. Um, so please do be careful of that, or I'll be on your heels. Uh, and uh, But I think generally it's, you know, I guess I can live with four trees instead of five. I guess, uh, you know, it is going to be sheltered nicely in terms of what's left there now in terms of uh, making the building less less visible. The uh, the plan, the landscape plan doesn't show anything about the sides in the back. Uh, now, I know there's pavement to a certain point there, which is apparently as close as eight feet <clears throat> in one location. Uh, is that being undisturbed or whatever? I mean, there's supposed to be a 10-foot planted buffer on on the backs and the uh, uh, and the side as well, and there's nothing here that shows whether there's anything there now, whether it's going to stay there, whether there's going to be anything planted instead. Um, so I, I appreciate what you've done with the front buffer, but we, we've kind of ignored the others. Uh, so I don't know if you have any answers to, to that question. The eight, the eight feet is actually the existing pavement, right? and that's going to be removed, so we, we will be at 10 feet. Um, so there will be a Is a that 10-foot strip? Is that going to be dirt, grass, tr existing trees, or planted trees? Uh, there are no existing trees there. Well, then there should be planted trees. Mm -hmm. um, I should have brought a, um, an aerial photograph or Google or something, but there are quite a few trees um, on the edge of the property, on both sides of the property line, and a full canopy that hangs over. And at the edge of the existing parking lot, which I do have... Um, so he, and these are photos of the existing development, and the you can see that the, there's very large, tall trees at the back of the site, maybe 20 to 25 feet tall, and they hang into the property. And at the edge of the existing parking lot now, there is a strip of about three or four feet of grass. So on our proposed landscape plan, we'll be pulling out the, the parking area, the existing parking area that extends into the required buffer, and then just looming and seeding that. To me, that's not adequate. Yeah. Our, our bylaws require um, that that buffer be, trees be retained if they're there, or trees be planted if they're not. We're not taking any down. Well, I understand, um, but... Uh, we can add some trees. To, to, re, to rely on the fact that some of the trees from the town land uh, overhang is not adequate in my estimation, personally. We can supplement and add some trees in there. And, and the plan should show that. I mean, when you're doing these buffer things, you should show existing trees and where you need to plant, which you did for the front very nicely. Um, but the other sides have just been ignored. And I, I you know, I, I, they shouldn't be. Uh, if you can meet the, I mean, there's no reason not to meet the bylaw. I mean, yeah, there's nobody back there. Okay, yeah, there's woods anyways in one sense. But, you know, if you don't want to do it because there's enough woods and it overhangs enough, then, uh, then at least tell us and ask for relief or whatever the case may be, I guess. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm not one to, to want to force planting trees if they're under existing canopy anyways because it's probably kind of stupid. Um, but I'd like to know what's what's what there, and I didn't go out there to check, so I guess I, I can blame myself for that. But, again, that's part of your proposal that should have come to us so we know what, what we're dealing with in those areas, too. Anything else, Mr. Martin? Uh, you know, generally speaking, it's it's quite a bit better. It's not as good as what's there now, but... Sayonara. Okay, Mr. Frapery. Um, yeah, you have improved it. Uh, uh, the building itself, it still is a long, long building in a lot of bays, um, and improved the front. I'm cur <coughs> curious about the front buffer, which is the most important one, and irrigation. Is there going to be a, something to help keep those trees and 
whatever you have planted in the front healthy? Just I, there is no irrigation now, and it's well treated. I mean, yeah, I'm just those trees have been there for a number of years. Is it about the four, the new four point five trees? Yeah. No, no irrigation uh, planned. So how are you going to keep them healthy? We can water them. <laughs> well, we just recently ran into this. That's why. Yeah. That was a requirement that they be irrigated and they returned back. I appreciate it would be difficult for irrigation on these four trees, but nevertheless, I think that's a valid question for sure. We'll put those water bags at the base of them to keep an eye on them. I mean, if we just make a requirement and... You know, we turn it in a year just to make sure they remain a, healthy. Yeah, a year after they finish it and just make sure your trees are doing okay. Okay. And yeah, we're just trying to make sure we keep things the way they're intended to be. So That's all. Certainly. That was my only question. Steiger. Um, <clears throat> are we asking questions? Or are we making you, comments? You, you, anything you want to do. Oh. Uh, well, I don't really have any questions. I will. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, may, I, may I just suggest a con condition in response to that? Uh, I just check with my client. And, uh, and with other towns, I've uh, had conditions where uh, the trees have to be reviewed after three years. If they're dead or dying, they have to be replaced. And we'd be happy to have that condition added to it. Would it take decision. three years for a tree to dry, die? I don't well, know. If, it, if it's there for three years and it takes, it's probably going to live. Yeah. I'd want to see it in a year, have it done in a year. But anyway, oh. go ahead. We, we, we can work some language on that. But, but um, comments, uh, I think it's a vast improvement from what we saw last time. I am impressed with the uh, materials that you're using on the facade as well as the roof. I'm very happy to see that you've left that natural buffer in the front. Um, you know, I, I think they, de they do need the ability to turn the vehicles around in the front. I don't think it's feasible that they not have the parking in the front. I think they've done a good job with the trees that they have planted to meet the bylaw. Um, so I, I, I think overall, you know, I, I think it's a very good improvement. So I uh, think if we put some conditions in there relative to keeping the trees healthy, um, that you planted. I'm not sure how we left it, how we're going to address the rear of it. If that needs to be further discussed, we could do that. But uh, I think on balance, you guys have done a very good job, and I, I think I could support this petition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Antoni. I agree. I think you've made significant changes and really improved on uh, the last presentation. So. Um, I think it, it, you also have addressed all of our issues uh, that we, we proposed uh, in the last meeting. So, you know, I, I think you've done a good job. And uh, I plan on supporting it as well. Thank you. Ms. Murphy? I agree with the comments that have been made. You know, um, I, I do too. Uh, I think you made a very good effort and a very th uh, a sincere effort to try to appease the, our concerns. I love what you've done, to be honest with you. I think uh, I'm very familiar with that area. I have Not that I go down every night, but I had a buddy that had a shop down there. We'd play poker every Saturday, so yeah, I'm pretty familiar with the whole way out of the industrial park. And, you know, it's just it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way of uh, when you keep that streetscape uh, in to shield the effect of what otherwise would be an extraordinarily unattractive building. It ain't pretty at all. It may be utilitarian, but it's not pretty. And I wish we could get a higher pitch on that uh, roof, but I also get that they come prefabricated and uh, that's how it's going to look. I think it will be softened uh, by a, uh, an asphalt shingle over a metal uh, roof. Uh, and uh, I just want to make sure uh, that as I looked at the various relief, which was a tongue full and a half uh, uh, on your uh, petition, uh, that the last one, that is 
uh, under 301.4.9 to waive the requirement that all lots in the B3 district which shall contain a business use retain existing trees of at least four inch caliber within prescribed buffers. That's gonna be included in the decision. But where is it that we're not gonna require trees within the buffers, the side and rear? Do you have, have is that in the notice somewhere? Well, that, that was a relief that was requested uh, based upon the first plan. And we were removing tr uh, trees of that caliper within the front buffer. We are no longer removing. I'm, the, I'm talking about side and rear. We're not removing the, any of those trees. Within, within the required buffer zone. No, I, I, I think you're missing my point. Mr. Martin adroitly pointed out that uh, you have to have those buffers, okay, those vegetated buffers. And uh, if they're not uh, something you've asked for a waiver on within the notice, then I don't know how we could possibly give you that relief tonight. I, I mean, the, the only place that we don't have um, the vegetated uh, buffer is in the rear of the building and we could submit a, a, an updated site plan uh, bringing it in, into conformance an updated landscape plan on the sides we are not removing uh, trees of those caliper within the buffers the buffer is uh, I, th I think it's uh, remains the same yes it's not it's not we are removing trees along the side of the building but not within the uh, the required buffer zone well, you know, we hate to be nitpicky about these things, but when we send out notices, it's to the world to make sure they understand what relief is being asked. And if that relief hasn't been requested, um, I don't know. That, that relief has been requested in the, uh, to, not, to, to, allow, uh, to allow us to remove. It was requested. In a, it, but we know what I'm trying to say is we no longer re need that re uh, relief because we meet the um, the buffer um, setbacks, uh, the vegetated buffer. We're not taking trees out of those required vegetated buffers now. Uh, that was in there because you, Mr. Martin. Well, they're not asking for relief from planting that buffer where apparently there aren't any trees now. I think either they need to ask for relief or plant the buffer. That's what I suggested. We would um, submit a, a, a supplemental um, landscape plan showing the trees in, in, the, in the rear buffer, but that relief that we're talking about is allowing us to remove uh, trees. There's one section that talks about trees, a three-inch caliper and another a four-inch caliper within uh, vegetated buffers. We were removing those out. Are you just m missing one of the things relevant to... Yeah. The existing rear buffer has nothing. You're not taking down anything, but you have to either say, I want relief so I don't have to plant anything, or I will plant stuff. No. That, I, I understand that, and I'm, what I'm trying to say is we will plant stuff, okay, and we will I'm, submit. I'm happy with that. Yeah. We will submit a supplemental plan okay. that meets the ordinance. The section we're talking about was asked for relief by, by removing trees that are in the front buffer, right. and we don't need that relief anymore. anymore. I understand that. Yep. Thank you. Yep. So uh, what are you going to put in the back just so we can anticipate a revised plan submitted to us? And uh, I'm not a landscape architect. We'll, we'll consult with a... I mean, just generally, yeah. we don't need the species. And, and, and while you're coming up with that, I know all the so-called parking lot trees you're planting are red maples, and there aren't that many of them, so it's probably okay, but we usually like to have some different variety, different variety yeah. Okay. Um, well, in our previous plan, we had intended to put some white pines in the, where we were taking trees down in between our drainage facilities in the previous plan. Um, so along the back... We could add um, some white pines in the buffers. They have to be behind these drainage swales um, or back in here where we have room behind the building. But um, I was just reviewing the bylaw, and um, I, I saw that it has a, a frequency or a spacing, required minimum spacing for trees in the, in, the, in the front buffer. Was there a bylaw specifically that you were replying to that, or, or had a, an account? Uh, that 301.4.9. Um, I think that was here. Let's see. Yeah. 
So I, uh, board talks about this big tree should be I was going to suggest two white pines on each end of the building behind these uh, drainage areas. You know, a total of four. Um, but I, I, I know that the bylaw had a requirement for spacing for trees in the... In the um, Every 20 feet? No, that's in the... Uh, it's 10 foot. I'm sorry. And then it talks about the trees staying. Loss removal. Contain no paving except for entrance and common driveways. Access to trees. Shall be planted with vegetation or maintained with other landscaping material. Um, so that, that's what we did. We were maintaining the lawn area and then adding to it, but I didn't notice anything when we were reviewing this with our, our landscape designer that there was a requirement for new trees in that rear buffer. And, and then reviewing it again tonight, I was looking for some equation to, like, um, you know, is it one every 50 feet or? You're right. I'm not sure it does say that. Okay, so in any event, you're going to put what three white pines? I'm, I'm thinking two on each end, and they would be so you know eight foot, but they mature to twenty within years. Okay, I mean, does that satisfy you, Mr. Martin? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're going to see a revised landscape plan that will show us four new trees, white pines, with what three inch caliper, three yep. inch caliper, three inches. Okay, yep. Okay, that certainly cheaper than a four inch, so. Don't need trucks getting back there and carry those. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments by the board? Hearing none. Anybody prepared? To, no. How we're going to do this is you're going to read down the relief you're requesting so that we don't miss anything. And I was just looking at your own uh, notes because I'll look forward to the draft decision. <laughs> I was I help you go, uh, just looking at the uh, at the buffer requirements. I can help you. And it says. Um, go ahead and help. You want, you want me to just fashion a motion here? I have some ideas. Sure. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the petition as requested relative to 104.4.1 and 104.4.2 relative to the condominium conversion that the applicant has met the criteria under the bylaw section it, regarding the use and proper management authority. So that one I think you're fine with. Okay. Uh, the applicant under 2025 and 4.6, that's relative to the uh, contractor yard and uh, in the aquifer section district, you've met the criteria under both of those. And you are seeking a Raising special rate. permit or variance from 301.4 to waive the requirement of parking areas to be located at the side or rear of the structure. Um, again, I, I think this is relative. I do think he meets the criteria for a variance in that regard in that if he were to have to put these parking in the side of the rear, it would create a public safety hazard for any emergency vehicles. And so therefore, it requires him to put the building at the rear of the lot. So it's, it's almost a shape issue with the lot because you, you don't have enough room to put it where it should be. So it would certainly be a hardship to you to have to do that. And I think it would be a public safety hazard for the town or even anybody in there should something happen. So I, I think we could grant variance relief for that. Um, You're doing this as a... Uh, this is a motion. Has to, the variance has to be a separate but motion, doesn't it? All, you're asking for all this relief all in one motion. All this relief in one motion. And then he can write the... Um, then you're asking for relief relative to 301.4.4 the four inch caliper trees. We no longer need that relief. You need, okay, then we are uh, striking that. Uh, you're asking for, so you don't need a five or more cars? That four inch. We're not removing the trees within the buffer. Okay. Uh, 301.4.6 to waive the requirement. Excuse the me. Okay. Um, Mr. Ravy just pointed out because for the 
for the driveway cut, so I guess we do need that. Okay. Yeah, on our plan, I, I think our, our um, we should have added the, the trees when they were coming out. Right? Yeah, those trees. described in red, yeah. Um, these are the small pin oaks <clears throat> that would have to come out for this driveway, so that's a great place for that driveway. And then over here, again, because of the maneuvering of the vehicles, tenants and fire department, um, we are proposing the new driveway and what's the date of that plan, please? I know we have it. I just want it in the record. What's the date of the plan? And is there a sheet number? Oh, yes. Uh, LA so that's what you're referencing as the plan known as, quote, a landscape plan, which only... Uh, is deficient because it needs to show four white pines in the rear, right? That's what we all agreed to tonight, yes. And so un under 301... 4.4, we do need the relief. 301, 4.4, okay. That's the four-inch caliper trees. I, I think we can waive that requirement. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you do because the driveways aren't really part of the buffer, I don't think. Well, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel, but just in case. <laughs> well, I think we can waive that requirement due to the fact that you need ingress and uh, ingress and egress. So uh, I think we can waive those. I don't think you need variance relief. I think we can grant it under special permit. Special permit, yeah. And I think we can grant under special permit the uh, requirement to have um, <coughs> less than one tree of three inch caliper per eight parking spaces. I think you're giving us what, 4.5 trees instead of? Oh, we've, <laughs> uh, we've got six trees instead of 4.1. Okay, so you're exceeding that. All right, uh, the 301.4.9 to waive the requirement that all lots in the B3 district which shall contain a business use retain existing trees of at least four inch calipers and prescribe up, but you don't need that, right? Except we talked about the rear buffer. Yeah, this actually would be more, actually, uh, again, the, the uh, driveways. Parking lot trees are only require giving four as per the building commissioner's definition of, of in-lot trees. Right. Yeah. So you do need relief on that one, right? So uh, I, think, I don't think we need you to give you a I think we can waive that requirement. I think we have the ability to waive that and get, issue a special permit for that. I think you have the ability to grant special permits on all of these. I, I, I applied for special permit on variance at the suggestion of the building commission because of the way the ordinance is drafted, but I think it's all special I, permits. I think we can actually, when I'm talking about variance and the more I look at it, I think we can grant all of this by waiver, okay, and grant it under special permit. So that would be my motion. Did you? Okay, well, wait a minute. Did you wait, include wait, the well, raise and Everybody stop for a minute. Aren't we missing one fundamental one, which is the raise and replace that's, that's on the 104.3? Okay, right. yes. then that's one I missed. Okay. okay. So and that, the, that, let's add that to your motion. Okay. And the, uh, I believe they meet the requirement under the raise and replace as well, your criteria. And that so it's not going to be substantially being suggested, board members, is an omnibus sort of motion. Uh, to cover all of these, uh, this requested relief, instead of uh, 27 individual votes or whatever it would take to do it. I don't think I've ever seen such a long litany of uh, uh, needed relief, but hey, whatever. Uh, so anybody, anybody disagree with that format on proceeding? I, I'm in favor of it 100%. All right, uh, so is there a second to that? Who wants to second that? I'll second. Who did? I will. Mantoni? <laughs> Let the record reflect Mr. Mantoni stepped up to the plate. Does the board care to have any discussion before proceeding along to a vote? Hearing none. Uh, it, You'd like to have a discussion, Mr. I, I was just going to suggest uh, one addition to the um, uh, motion is that we uh, submit a supplemental landscape plan as a condition a yes and right and we're going to have a review relative to the health of the planted trees okay within one year Thank within you. one year of you guys finishing your building one year of installation of the trees okay 
So just put it on the agenda, come back in, we'll go out and see if they're healthy trees, if they are. You know, it's not rocket scientists to, uh, science to uh, put in a tree in the ground and keep it healthy, whether you use a hose or a water bag or whatever, okay? So we now have the motion made, seconded, uh, with two stated conditions. We will do it by roll call vote. Mr. Martin? Aye. Mr. Frapery? Aye. Mr. Uh, Igo? Aye. Ms. Mintani? Aye. Ms. Murphy? Aye. And I'm a knight. That carries unanimously. I don't need to tell you the drill. So as soon as I see the draft, I will review it. Uh, in this case, uh, all closely only because of the relief you need to make sure we haven't overlooked anything in the draft. And then it gets filed with the town clerk, 20 days lapse. Assuming there be no appeal, it becomes final. Uh, and that document is then brought to the Registry of Deeds for recording. Mr. Kenny, you've done this before, haven't you? Yes, a couple of times. Thank you all very much. <laughs> good to see you, sir. Always good to see you, Mr. Kenny. Mr. Chairman. I'm here, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, do we have to act on that petition where the petitioner wasn't here in any way? Or? Well, I think we have to act because it's, it's otherwise pocket uh, allowed. You know? oh, yeah. yeah, so let's go back to that. And it's unfortunate. I, my suggestion would be that somebody make a motion that we continue it uh, for 60 days for her uh, to take an action to put it back on our agenda. Because I happen to think people were actually here on it. Uh, but I could be wrong. I saw a whole group walk out that didn't make any sense to me that they were walking out of something that had they had no, no input on in the first one. But perhaps um, they were here for the evangelical. Uh, and we, um, can we make it less than 60 days because we need to act on it within 65 days, right? So instead of pushing it out that close to the... Sure, put it on the next meeting. Or, or, or within 45 days? 45 days. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but we haven't opened the hearing so, because they didn't. Well, they, they filed the application. We have to act on it within 65 days of them filing the application. Well, then 45 days is too when much. They, I'd have to, I'd have to that's look too at what, do you see a date on the application? Oh, yeah, when is the date of the application? I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, June date. These constructive approvals. We've got to keep an eye on August 23rd. So when's it clocked in? Right on the top August, right. What? 23rd right. July is when it was stamped. Yeah. Oh. We need to hear this. Oh, I thought August, no? September sometime? Uh, where would you stamp it? Oh, I'm looking at that stamp there. Yeah. Well, let's act on it. Instead of all this. Oh, no, I'm sorry, July 31st, yeah. I'm looking at a petition date. Am I wrong? Isn't this the. It should be stamped. It's the right one. July yeah, Jessica July 23rd. July, July 31, eight. actually. The date on the back from Grillis is 18 August. Right, yeah. That's the stamp when they. How can this be dated August 23rd? That's their date, not when they... Oh, it was actually filed with the... Okay, July 23rd. So let's act on it. Let's act on it, okay? okay. Uh, the, the petition of failure... The petition is failure to appear uh, for the hearing. I move that we dismiss the petition. That's on petition 5048? Yes. That of Jessica Roos with property at 144 West Yarmouth Road. Uh, and uh, which uh, daycare relief essentially was uh, uh, sought? Yes. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Okay. There's a motion made and seconded to dismiss uh, uh, the uh, petition. Uh, without uh, prejudice. To, to, yeah, without prejudice, of course. And uh, on that motion, does the board need to have any discussion before proceeding to a vote? Hearing yeah. none, would you? Does that mean they can't come back for that? No, without prejudice. Yeah, we're dismissing without prejudice. Um, so on that petition, uh, we'll do it on, by uh, voice vote. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. The record will reflect. Okay? And it's unfortunate, but that's the problem when you don't show up. So that goes to you along with this. Do we have minutes that you'd like us to prove? We do. Yep. Yes, Mr. Igo, please. What'd you say? Just our minutes, yes, please. Okay, we have two sets of minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for August 24th and August 10th. Second. Uh, 
need, no need for a discussion unless somebody uh, has something particularly. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes uh, for the two meetings as reference, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, that carries unanimously. And on that, I move to adjourn and uh, want to thank, as we're walking out the door, our wonderful zoning administrative assistant who gets these minutes done in record time. What's your name? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Who's, it, who's that? Alan. Yeah. No, it's the Dolores Fountain. <laughs> All right, so we now have adjourned. So a week from tonight is still a week on the from record.